July 2022, it's Thor 4, Thor Love and Thunder. Is this movie any good? Should cinephiles see it? Should anybody see it? Let me tell you what I think coming up next. This is the fourth Thor movie. And you know, when I ask my students, my college students, what are the best Marvel movies? Inevitably, Thor Ragnarok is one of the top two or three that most of them will answer. So this that's Thor 3. This movie comes after it. And I think it amps up the stupidity, the cultural references, the flippancy that was in Thor Ragnarok. And this is a really, really weird Marvel movie. In part because I think they're trying to make it, Taika Waititi is trying to make it, for eight-year-olds and for people who are eight years old in 1987. Just look at this poster up here. And that's part of the attraction for me to the movie. It's got a retro feel, some of the looseness and hamminess of those mid to late 80s movies that are sort of superhero-esque or fantasy level-esque. The movie involves one central character actually to like a lot played by Christian Bale. It's Gore called The God Butcher. You get an origin story about why Gore is trying to kill off all the gods in this movie, including Thor himself, why he's a villain in the movie. I, I really like the opening five minutes of this movie. I think it's an interesting moment for the movie. And there are a lot of interesting moments in this movie. It's partly why I kind of like this movie some of the time at least. Anyway, Gore is after Thor, which is kind of rhymes, obviously. And that's all you need to know. There's really not much of a plot here except for Thor's girlfriend shows up in the movie. She's actually dying of stage four cancer. This is Jane Foster, played by Natalie Portman. And, you know, say you have a movie with Natalie Portman and Christian Bale and, and a number of interesting cameos. Just wait to see who they are. And this could be a movie for adults or a ridiculous movie. But I, unfortunately, the problem with this movie, let me get into that first, is that's what I call a buffet movie. It's everything to everybody. It, it gives you every little flavor, every little emotion. And I don't think that works very well overall as a total film. Really, this movie wants to be about six or seven Saturday morning cartoons strung together in a row, if you're familiar with He-Man or She-Ra, something like that. That's what this movie feels like to me. But also it's trying to be high art or sometimes very melodramatic with either the stage four cancer or the religious doubt or atheism that this character Gore the God Butcher, you know, brings to the film. So on the one hand, the movie is very flippant. I mean, Thor is a stupid, tells stupid dad jokes. There's a couple of Mel Brooks level jokes in this movie. He's pretty flippant. And he doesn't do much overall in the film. And then you get, well, Jane Foster is dying of, of cancer. And this god butcher wants to kill off all the gods because he doesn't think there are the gods are valid or they're good. He doesn't believe in eternity. This is real interesting stuff or could be. But the movie is also very casual and very flippant as well as in terms of like being for eight-year-olds. I did really love, there's a black and white stretch in this movie that's absolutely, I thought it was fantastic. Great visuals. Great look, and it proves that black and white in movies, no matter what movie is beautiful, I think they should make a Marvel movie in black and white. You can see how crisp and excellent this is. Compare it to the rest of the movie. There's so, This is the best part of the movie, in my opinion. Some other random comments. How much money is Guns N' Roses making out of this movie? There's at least five Guns N' Roses song. I counted four Guns N' Roses references in the first 30 minutes. And, you know, they were popular in the 1980s, the late 1980s. I think that's why they're in here. But man, there's a lot of Guns N' Roses, and I don't know why. Imagine me putting a lot of Soundgarden in the movie, which I probably would do, or whatever band you love. Maybe it's too much of the same thing. And again, there's scary, very scary moments in this movie, children in peril, and I think Marvel and Disney are getting away with violating uh, the MPA's rules. This should be an R-rated movie, probably, maybe. Do I care? Not really, but I'm just saying the rating system is stupid as usual, and they let Marvel and Disney get away with stuff the other movie makers could not. So shame on you, MPAA, for this. Like Once again, doing this. I would have liked this movie to go in two directions. One, to be stupider, actually, to be hammier. It's very hammy as it is, especially Chris Hemsworth as Thor. But the other direction would be to make a more serious movie featuring Gore the God Butcher as a villain and Thor being heroic, having to deal with that. And, and the movie would then be about religious doubt and atheism, which could be an interesting Marvel movie. But this is too much of a comic book, super Saturday morning cartoon movie in that sense. So I, again, it's, it jams together all kinds of tones. I don't think they've ever gone together well in art. It's really hard to pull off that smorgasbord approach which is what this movie takes. What did you think of Thor Love and Thunder? Did it give you a retro feel? Did, did you like the Guns N' Roses stuff? Should anybody watch this movie? Let us know in the comments and please subscribe to this channel for more reviews and great content on great movies. Have a great day.